The days are getting shorter and shorter and the nights are getting longer and longer. Most mornings awaken to a frosty sheen of the world and sometimes even snow. This is the time of the winter solstice, the shortest day and the longest night of the year. This year, the solstice takes place on December 21st. Many pagans celebrate this time with an all-night bonfires and vigils to welcome back the sun, which represents the reborn god. This is also the time of the second battle between the oak and the holly king. In addition to bonfires and vigils, many people celebrate Yule with evergreen decorations, making environmentally friendly ornaments, and by making warm drinks like wassail or mulled wine. Duck, duck, ducky. I've got with me Don the Truby from Patrick and Arcade. Hi, Don. Hi, Doug. Today we're going to make a lovely mode wine. Because Duck loves wine. But to make this, you need a big old pot to put everything in. It's a wine. Some oranges. Hold on, oranges. And some cloves and cinnamon. If you don't have cloves and cinnamon, you can use pumpkin pie spice. Because it has both in it anyway. Now the first You're thing not going to need do... a country ham. No. Yes. No. No, there's, there's no country yes, ham. Yes, you country ham, because country ham makes everything taste better. No, there's no country ham in mulled wine, Doug. No country ham? No. Whatever. Now the first thing you want to do is start studying the oranges with cloves. You just simply take the, the, the clove, the whole clove, and push it directly into the orange. What are you doing? I put in the country ham. It, there's no country ham that goes in this. Are you sure? I'm positive. That country ham makes everything taste better. Well, it may taste good, but it doesn't make mulled wine taste good. So no country ham? No country ham. No, no. <laughs> After you get your orange studded, you want to go ahead and put it in the pot. And then you want to take a whole bottle of wine. Hey, country ham! No, country ham! But country ham makes no. everything taste better! No! No country ham? No. And now you want to add a couple of dashes of cinnamon. What are you doing? Where did the country ham go in? There's no country ham. But everything tastes better with country ham. <sighs> Look, I've got a sh I got my show. Ham. I've got my show to do. I'm, I'm gone. Go. I'm I'm gone. I can't do this. Well, I can't do this. Ham. Country ham. Oh, hello. This is Professor Fluffy Cuddlekins with another episode of Crop Corner. I'm here with my friend TJ. And he is here today on this nice sunny day. That's why it's my sunglasses. To make pine cone bird feeders. <laughs> to make pine cone bird feeders, you will need the following things. Pine cones. Ours are very small for small hands. Show the pine cones. You may use larger ones if you like. Bird seed. String. Butter. Any bread will do. I prefer the tasty bread. To make the pine cone bird feeders, do this. Ah, yes, like that. Well, thank you for joining us on Professor Fluffy's trip. What? Oh, you need instructions? Should we give them instructions? Yes. Okay. First, Put your string tied onto your pine cone. Now that you have your string tied to your pine cone, lather the pine cone with lots and lots of peanut butter. Mmm, peanut butter. Oh, sorry. Yes. After you cover your pine cone with the peanut butter, mm, dip the pine cone into the bird seed. After you have dipped your pine cone in the bird seed, it should look something like this. You can hang your pine cone in the trees, and it will attract all manner of colorful birds to come and eat it. 
Thank you for joining me, Professor Flippy Cuddlekins, on another episode of Crab Corner. And I'd like to give a special thanks to TJ and his beautiful sunglasses for helping us. We hope you join us next time on Circle Round. We will make who knows what. Weird cat. Have you ever wondered why some trees are evergreens and keep their leaves and some trees are deciduous and lose their leaves? Well, this is a Native American story about why that happened. Long, long ago, the Great Spirit decided to hold a contest for all his trees to see who could stay awake the longest. Within a few weeks, trees like the maple, and the oak fell asleep. They couldn't stay awake. And so the great spirit over the next couple weeks started watching all his trees get very sleepy and go to sleep. Well, several months passed and there were still a few trees awake and he was very surprised. The trees that stayed awake were trees like the cedar and the pine. At the end of these months, he called an end to the contest, and he awarded the trees like the cedar and the pine as the winners. Their prize was that they got to keep their leaves all year round, and the losers got to lose their leaves, and they didn't get to keep their leaves during the winter time. And this is why some trees lose their leaves, and some trees are evergreens and get to keep their leaves. The evergreens now have come to be a symbol to us of hopefully a short winter and the return strength of the sun after the solstice. Hi, this is Don the Druid, and you're watching Practical Arcanum. When creating a ritual space for either solitary or even larger events, there are several factors that you want to take into consideration. We thought we'd take some time on this episode to sort a few of these factors out and help get you into the basics. The main consideration is the amount of people that will be present during your ritual. Your space should be adequate enough to fit all those you know to be attending. Even if you're doing something solitary, you'll want to have enough room to move about freely. And if you're hosting a larger event, you're going to want to give your fellow pagans enough personal space within the ritual space. After all, there's nothing more embarrassing than bumping into your neighbor when you're communing with the gods. And remember, the most important thing is that there's no one way on how your ritual space must be done. You can keep it simple. or dress it as much as you see fit. The idea is for you to be comfortable with what you're doing. Remember, this is your time to shine. One very essential detail to any successful ritual is the consideration given to privacy. If you're working with a group, know your fellow worshipers. Do they appreciate putting on a show? Are they still in the broom closet? Respecting the privacy of yourself and those around you will mean a more intimate service on the day. Other considerations would be how much light your ritual space needs, where your quarters are located, and how the weather could affect your event. Keep in mind that not all services need to occur outside. If the weather is bad or if the need arises, ritual space can be established indoors just as easily. Well, we hope we've helped you make some considerations for your own ritual space. Remember, there's no right or wrong way to do your ritual space. Just make sure that it's right for you and your guests. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of Practical Arcanum. We want to wish you all a very happy Yule.